Hi guys, so I wanted to do a little video for you today, um, five things that I wish I knew when I started training. So I've got a few notes wrote down, so I will be looking up and down. Um, these are things that um, I picked up along the way, um, and you know, you make so many mistakes um, along the way, and this is why I think coaching is, is such an important thing. Um, I've had clients come to me that have been going to the gym for 10 years, and um, they've made little to no progress in, in the 10 years that they've been going at it. And then they've come to me and made more progress in six months than they have in 10 years. Um, I was lucky because I had a dad that was very much into bodybuilding and I was going to bodybuilding shows before I could talk, before I could walk in a, in a, in a carry cot. Um, again, in gyms in a carry cot around um, some very well-known British bodybuilders back in the day um, up to Olympia standard. Um, and I was all, my dad always had loads of different books about training, nutrition, and, and drugs and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I had a relatively good surrounding of, of how to learn, and a good thing as well is um, I was brought up where um, in, in hardcore gyms, like back in the day, it was just mainly hardcore gyms, um, and that's where the people got in shape. And then these more commercial gyms came more into play. Um, mention no names and um, the standard of physiques and the tr the standard of training I think tended to drop um, which is why I, I currently train people at um, more of a hardcore gym where loads of champion bodybuilders powerlifters have come out of because that environment I just feel as though is a better environment to train people in my clients pick up that mindset I mean I've, I've got clients that come to me that have never set foot in a gym and they're, they're straight in at the deep end around people that also train really hard um, and they, they're picking up that mindset, they're seeing everyone else training really hard and they're more likely to mimic that. Um, whereas if I was to take them to a more commercial gym where there's a higher percentage of people that don't really train that hard, um, then they'll be looking at them and thinking that that's the norm instead, which means their results will be much slower. Okay, anyway, I'm going to get on. Um, so number one, train for your goal and don't get distracted. So... I first started training when I was about 16 years old, uh, properly uh, on my own accord. Um, and you know, you see people training for strength, you see people training for muscle growth, um, you see people training for different types of sports. You've got to focus on what you want to do with your physique um, and train specifically for that goal. So, in terms of the rep ranges, in terms of your training split. Um, in terms of the exercises, everything needs to be specific towards that goal because then you'll get there quicker. If you're, if you want to be, uh, if you're more bothered about more bothered about muscle growth and you're training like two, three reps and doing one RMs and stuff, as most people do when they get in the gym, they want to test their strength all the time. They're doing one RMs, left, right, and center. That won't help you develop maximal hypertrophy. Um, from the research that I've read and from my own training and. and, and trial and methods with clients, I found that a rep range of eight to 12 is generally best. Um, and um, you know, when you're going below that, you are going into more of the, the, the strength um, and power. I mean, and that's fine if you wanna do that, but me growing up, I kind of got distracted sometimes because people are like, oh, how much can you bench? How, can you, how much can you squat? How much can you deadlift? And you kind of get drawn back into that one RM um, type training. So, Train for your goal um, and um, really, really focus on that. Don't get distracted by other people. Don't get drawn into what other people are doing. And this is why I think it's so important sometimes to train with people that also have the same goal as you. Um, especially if you're into, say, com for example, competitive bodybuilding, train around those kind of people. Um, and um, you'll both be, you'll be pushing each other all the time. Um, okay, so secondly, similarly to the first one, but eat for your goal. So, um, if you want to be big and lean, focus on that. Um, and when I say big and lean, I mean you can grow muscle and get leaner at the same time. That's absolutely possible, especially for a beginner. Um, there's no need to get really fat. It's just not necessary at all. Um, so, you know, if you're focusing mainly on hypertrophy, um, so muscle growth, you really want to have ad adequate amounts of protein. 
the the biggest issue that I see when all types of people come to me is they're not eating enough protein, um, they're not having enough meat, fish, eggs, um, whey isolate, those are my main sources that I implement into people's diets. Um, and some people think they are like if if your answer is loads to the question how much protein are you eating then you probably don't know how much you're eating which is a worry to me because I know I could tell you how much grams of protein every single client of mine is eating including myself um, and those amounts are dictated by by their goals and um, what they want to achieve so um, the, yeah, the, the the thing that hinders people the most in terms of muscle growth is their protein intake. So, again, this was me um, when I was a young kid. Um, I just thought food made you grow. Um, I knew that protein was important, but in general, I just thought it was food. When in reality, protein is the key to um, grow muscle. Yes, um, it it is. Um, important to be in a slight calorie surplus um, if you're in too much of a calorie surplus you're just going to gain too much body fat and it's been proven that the body fat sorry that the muscle grows um, at a certain level of body fat when you're going too high body fat you're you start to become more insulin resistant and muscle growth actually becomes harder um, past a certain extent um, and I, I, just, I just you know just it just you just don't look that good when you're in that phase either. There's just absolutely no need for it. Um, so, um, I mean that 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 subject itself is really complex, and I could talk for a long time on nutrition specific for your goal. But it but but bottom line is eat for your goal, um, and that can be such a complicated process of of learning exactly what food to eat. Um, and how much uh, for that goal but again if your knowledge isn't there you can trial and error for a long period of time or you can take on someone who's experienced who's, who's been there who's done it um, and who's, who's qualified not that qualifications are, are always needed um, but I did learn a hell of a lot for my degree in sport and exercise science um, where nutrition was an absolute fascination in my time and still is um, so I picked up a hell of a lot from that um, okay there's more to training than bro split. So what do most people do when they join the gym and they're trying to get big? They do legs, they do shoulders, they do arms, they do back, they do chest. Um, and it's, so let's just think about that for a second. You've got four upper body workouts. So you've got arms, you've got back, you've got chest, you've got shoulders, you've got one lower body workout. So over the course of a month, four weeks you're going to hit legs four times and you're going to hit upper body four eight sixteen times so this generally equates to someone having smaller legs than their upper body uh, and what you got to remember is um, a good leg workout is the most metabolically stimulating um, workout you can do so what I mean by that is you're going to you're going to increase your metabolism more from doing that and burn more body fat in that workout than any of the other workouts. Um, so your ability to lose body fat will be a lot easier um, if you're doing more leg workouts per week. Um, so if you're doing just upper body workouts all the time, again, the main issue with that is is you're gonna end up with um, a not evenly proportioned physique, which was something that I absolutely had. So for the first couple of years of training, I was lucky if I trained legs once a week, because I hate training legs. Um, then when I actually got into that, um, doing um, eventually push ball legs, um, I the, my physique developed more. But even then, I then went onto something else, which I'm going to cut it short here because um, I want to do this in 10 minute videos, um, and I'll explain more about um, the training styles and splits.